the match. The year was 1971. The place was Hamden Park, Glasgow. The crowd was over 100,000. That is to say, double the maximum capacity allowed today. And it was midwinter, damp and bitterly cold. We were standing on the terracing, all packed together. No seats in those days. People were hardy. They needed to be. We had no choice. I was 11 years old and attending the big match. The old firm rivalry. Rangers versus Celtic. No team could afford to lose. Rangers went on to win the European Cup Winners' Cup the following year. Their greatest historical achievement. But Celtic, at the time, were also a big noise in Europe as they had been European champions just four years earlier with their 67 European Cup win. The match kicked off at 3pm, allowing the fans a few hours in the pub beforehand. Remarkably, alcohol was allowed into the ground too. It's also worth remembering that there were only three TV channels in those days and not a lot else to do and BBC2 was really snowy, which meant I could not see the ball very well when watching Wimbledon in black and white, and so I dreaded when the tennis matches switched over to BBC2 too, because the picture quality was awful. On this day, I got into the football ground free with my mate. We were both lifted over the the turnstile by an adult. The grown men towered over us, and as we stood on the terracing, we were completely surrounded by these tough manual workers, for the most part, as they let off steam at the weekend. Throw in sectarianism and mix it with liberal quantities of alcohol, and we were experiencing a lethal situation, sometimes literally so. Inside of me was a constant fear of a goal being scored. If we scored, Then everyone around jumped up, causing a wave in the crowd which would lift me in the air and put me down somewhere else, resulting in my complete disorientation. After being thrown round in the surge, I would then be surrounded by a new set of faces. On the other hand, if they scored, I would instantaneously see the facing half of the crowd in the distance turn blue, as all their scars were brandished high in the air. But all around me at the Celtic end, I would be overwhelmed by a feeling of intense depression, of a depth which reached the core of your being. And then a wall of sound hit you, the roar of celebration of the goal coming from the ranger's end, and it was truly deafening. The thunderous sound came like a blow, a couple of seconds after the vision of the sea of blue scars, and it crushed your very soul. Next came the backlash of aggression from the Celtic supporters, the unspeakable language of intense anger projected at the Rangers fans. I lived in terror of a goal. There were grown men peeing on the ground around me and there were constant projectiles being thrown, bottles, cans, coins, sometimes even darts. The raw brutality of hate was violently expressed as individuals shouted, abuse at the opposition until their voices broke and they became hoarse. The push of the crowd was suffocating and I was often pressed against the protection barriers which could get twisted unrecognisably by the sheer force of weight. This was not for the faint-hearted. Getting out of Hamden was the worst thing. You were essentially caught up in a stampede as we all walked down the steep bank. I could lift my feet up off the surface, but it would still continue moving under the momentum of the crowd. It did not bear thinking thing about what would happen if someone tripped and fell over. They would stand no chance. <laughs>